Are you still struggling on how to present yourself in interviews? Do you debate internally on what the interviewers are looking for? My guest today is Kim Williams. She's a senior manager and director at Indeed and was gracious enough to lend her time to the Design Today podcast. She's interviewed hundreds of people and built a very strong team there at Indeed. When I approached her a couple months back, we immediately clicked after she shared that in her experience of hiring, it's all about the soft skills. I kid you not, it was completely unprompted. Here's a professional whose team is as large as you can imagine, sharing insights on how designers need to have a solid grasp on three soft skills when interviewing. Listen close as she gives insights on sharing your own core narrative, a sense of presence, and demonstrating confidence while you interview. Kim is one of those individuals who you will remember because of the way she treats you. While she's light years in front of me with her professional experience, she treated me as an equal and made a lasting impression for that. Thank you, Kim, for coming on the show and sharing your insights. Without further ado, let's get after it. Kim, thank you for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. No, this is a cool opportunity uh, for for me personally, and I think for those who are listening to the show to be able to have somebody who's not from Utah come to Utah and give some of their expertise on the show is a really, it's a treat. So I really appreciate your time. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for the invite. I really enjoyed our conversations, preparing for this moment, and I'm excited about our chat today. Yeah, it was be really great. You just spoke at the front conference today. Uh, by the time people are listening to this, front will have come and gone, but your presentation on front actually ties real closely to what we and I are going to talk about today. You know, some of those interpersonal skills, uh, management skills, but you know, how people work together in a workplace. I, I think uh, it will be something we'll talk about, but before we get too far into it, will you give uh, everyone a little introduction to who Kim Williams is, uh, how you got to where you're at today? Uh, just tell me a little bit about that. Sure. So my career started out in traditional advertising and PR, and then I shifted into product design. So really building the bridge between brand design, brand narrative, and product design. Mm -hmm. And most recently with eBay and Indeed, focusing on systems. Mm -hmm. So how do we create design systems that seek to unify a cohesive uh, product experience across multiple different portfolios? Yeah. What's the size of your team that you're, you work on right now? Right now, um, my specific team is over a hundred. Yeah. Um, and we like as a whole went through rapid growth. Yeah. And so it's, I'm excited to talk about hiring and uh -huh. interviewing and all of that because it's uh, such a critical part of the process of building a team. How long have you been in a position of hiring? Not necessarily with Indeed, but throughout yeah. your career, how long have you been in that position? That's a good question. Probably over a decade. Really? Yeah. So you've done a couple interviews then. <laughs> a handful. <laughs> a handful. Are we, are we talking over 500? I don't know that I have a number on it, but it would probably, probably be some ridiculous number. With a team of 100 right now, you've got to go through. A, there's probably a ratio of how many people, how many interviews you've done to people on your team. Yeah. Fortunately... I'm not like directly reporting into, I don't have that many directs. Sure. So I'm not conducting all of the sure. interviews. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a journey for sure. Well, you've got a lot of expertise. It's actually what drew me to reaching out to you. I, I work with another uh, a friend of mine. Her, uh, her name is Jennifer. She's helped with the podcast. And when she and I were kind of collaborating on uh, upcoming guests, we were looking at that front list. And she was one who recommended, she was like, have you looked into Kim Williams' pedigree, and I pulled you up on LinkedIn. I started looking through. I was like, wow, that seems like somebody who's uh, probably gone through the paces of the topics that we like to talk about on the podcast. And then after our phone calls, like this fits so naturally that this is this would be awesome. Uh, when we were on that phone call, kind of discovering topics, we talked about a couple of these different things that really help candidates 
set themselves apart. Uh, and you brought up a couple of principles that uh, I don't know where, where you came up with these. Maybe they're themes that you've identified over the years. But will you introduce those concepts and tell me a little bit about them? Yeah, I think what's interesting for folks to think about, particularly when you're new or even early career um, and actually just relevant to today, I, mm -hmm. I still use this approach to this day. It's leaning into what your core narrative is. Yeah. So mine has been and currently is design systems. Um, it has been the way that I've started in product design and I'm a systems thinker. Mm -hmm. And so it shapes the way that I talk about myself. I talk about how I come to solutions. Right. And I think all roads lead back to that core. Sure. And so if you have your core learning and the area within which you've gained some expertise, it becomes like a, like almost like a, a backbone um, that you just continue to add to. Uh, and so if you think about a movie or a well-told story, there's always within that narrative, a big challenge mm -hmm. that you are experiencing how did you navigate that challenge and then how did you become successful yeah. in the end and having those case studies, having those talking points that add color mm -hmm. that help others understand what your journey has been. Yeah. And even if you're just starting out, it's here's what I've been learning, you know, as opposed to further along. Here's <laughs> what I have learned. So is that what you expect then to see in that interview process is to be kind of taken along on that journey of what someone's core narrative is? Or how do you, how do you actually see that in an interview? That's a really great question. What we want to see um, as, you know, folks that are interviewing, we're looking for not just the, the raw material, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So not just the, here's what I did, but here's the impact. Here's how I know that this work was impactful. Here's how this work contributed to an overarching um, initiative. Here's mm -hmm. how these metrics moved a company-wide goal. Here's how this solution solved this customer need. Yeah, And so we're looking for how you connect the dots and how plugged in you are to the work um, and how you're able to articulate the value of the work. Mm. I think that when you start in the career of design, you think that designing is the job. Mm -hmm. Designing is like a small percentage of the job. Mm. Mostly. Speaking my language. <laughs> it's sales. It's establishing partnerships. It's um, art, you know, communicating effectively the work yep. itself. And so when you get into an interview setting, uh, we want to see that you're able to advocate for your work um, and that you're able to think on the fly, yeah. uh, answering critical questions about the project, um, but that you're showing through your process and through your narrative the details that indicate that this is actually your work, yeah. that you care about this work, and that um, and that you understand the business and customer value of the work. So that sounds easier to do once you've got some experience under your belt. Now, what do you recommend somebody does, uh, and I guess articulating their core narrative when they lack that experience, when they're coming, let's say fresh out of school or when they, you know, may not have uh, some of those statistics behind their work that you're just describing, what do you recommend they do then? What I'd say to that is everyone has a narrative. I think if whether if you're fresh out of college, it's what did you learn in those classes? What what is it that you have to offer? Um, what is the unique perspective that you bring to the table mm -hmm. that is your contribution? How do you like to learn? How do you learn? What are your values? Yeah. So speak to, because so much of it in the early days is how hungry are you to learn? Yes. Will you be a sponge? Yes. Are you going to be someone that um, the team will be excited to partner with and yep. work with? And so showing and, and speaking to those values, it's interesting because 
as a design leader, it's expected that during your interviews, you speak to your values. But I think this is something that early on in your career, you can. Mm -hmm. I value critical feedback. I value candor. I value um, being able to um, be challenged in reviews. Yeah. I, you know, so yeah. speaking to your values and what you have learned uh, in the time and what you're eager to learn. So here's what I've learned so far. Here's what I'm really excited about um, exploring more in this position, in this role, given the opportunity. Sure. That makes sense. How does someone go about then? And you kind of just hit on this, but identifying their core narrative. You know, you, you talked a, a second ago about it's kind of like a movie where there's a storyline, right? But storylines don't just get stumbled upon, right? A lot of thought goes into identifying what the storyline is and the different plot points in it. So how does one sit down and start to evaluate what their core narrative is? You know, it's interesting because thinking about your career as every moment that has led you up to this very moment. Mm -hmm. Don't limit it to your, your educational experience and your sure. work experience only. You are a whole person. And so what you have to offer is not just what you, who you are at work, it's who you are as a person. And so, you know, your diverse background, where did you grow up? How do you learn? How do you process information? Are you hyper analytical mm -hmm. and what drove that? You know, I think speaking to some of this, again, these are the softer th skills that most people don't think about or most people don't consider as something that a hiring manager is looking for sure. and interested in. Yes, exactly. Um, but that's a huge thing for me. Like if I come across a candidate that's saying, hey, I grew up in a household of teachers and so I know how to communicate really, really well because they taught me how to teach. And I think that's you, huge. Absolutely. And what you just did there in that in that uh, setup there was connecting some of those dots of like, this was my story and this is how it's affected me. And I don't mean that in a, a negative way, but this is this is uh, how it's shaped me. Yeah. I think that's the better way of saying it. Yeah. You know, um, you're from Jamaica. How has that shaped you, right? And and that's something that, well, here in Utah County, there's not a whole lot of people from Jamaica. <laughs> um, but it's not just the fact that, hey, I'm from Jamaica, so I'm good for this job. It's, hey, I'm from Jamaica. This is maybe something that's uh, helped shape me to be good and compassionate or empathetic or whatever. It may, how does that, that plot point then evolve into your core narrative? Yeah, 100%. So for me, it's, you know, coming to America when I'm young and what it means to adjust at such a young age. Yeah, exactly. What it means. And not only did I, um, my family move here when I was young, we also moved around a, a ton. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to be adaptable. Mm -hmm. I had to have tough skin because, yep. you know, when you're starting out, you have an accent, you're different, people pick up. Like, I was totally picked on. I was yeah. um, for being so different all the time. And in every context, I was always different. Yeah. Um, meeting new people. Meeting new people. Befriending new people. Yeah. So I just learned to just be like a duck with, you know, water on my back. Uh -huh. Like, I just, that's just a skill that I picked up resiliency and adaptability you know it's funny because it almost seems that as like a ux designer or someone in that ux space we almost are cheating a little bit in this job position because everything we've ever gone through can come back to how it could benefit you and ux and i, I say that maybe we're cheating a little bit because it's like I don't know, I'm rolling off things right now, but if you're an accountant, maybe some of those experiences don't affect how you are an accountant. You know, if you're uh, someone where you, I don't know, in a position that is numbers based or is science based, you know, some of your experiences aren't going to affect your scientific study. It's still science. 
But at the end of the day, as a UX designer, well, we need to be naturally empathetic or we need to be naturally curious. Like all those life events that you've gone through really do come back to benefit you as a UX designer. So we're better suited then to apply those life experiences maybe than any other career. Yeah, I'd agree. <clears throat> I'd, um, I'd say that life experiences impact everyone. Like even that accountant might approach her sure her work in a different way sure but but you're right like i i'm we're touching on the same point that hey our, our roles are about empathy yes and, yes and uh deeply understanding and and having being able to demonstrate that and connect in that way uh is good going into an interview for example where you know the the subject matter or you understand it, or you're able to make a, a parallel. So, for example, um, if it's an e-commerce site, you know that there's a dual-sided marketplace. Mm -hmm. Being able to speak to that, being able to show that you've done your research, show that you've done your homework, and that you're uh, able to apply critical thinking to the space yeah. is is like another way. Yeah. To sh show your your abilities. One of the other thoughts that you brought up on the, our phone call, uh, you talked about confidence. Tell me about the role of confidence in this process. Yeah, it's interesting because you want to strike the balance of confidence in who you are and in, in being hungry to learn, and also the necessity of humility because yes. you are just starting out. Yes, and so striking that right balance. How do we identify that, though? Because it, you could be so concerned that uh, my confidence is going to come off arrogant and I don't want to be arrogant. That's not me, but I want to show confidence. How do we identify that? It's a good question. <laughs> um, confidence, I would say. I would say the indicators of arrogance. They come into play when you when you think that there is one way or you don't leave room for other approaches or other points of view. I think that that's where we see signals of arrogance. And I think that that is a key differentiator between arrogance and confidence. Yeah, that rings true. You can true. be really, really confident and say, hey, I've tried this before. I, I have a hunch that this is probably going to work uh -huh. uh, in this scenario. And, <clears throat> and if you leave that room for like, hey, let's give this a try. Let's see how this works for this team. Let's let's try this. I think it could work yeah. um, versus this is the way I've seen this. It It's done this way and this is how we're doing it, period. It's just very different. I right? think that rings true totally because you, know, you do want to come off with uh, – Do you want everyone should still be teachable. I don't care if you've got zero years of experience or 15 years of experience. We're always learning. Uh, but I don't think teachable and – arrogant or or confident i don't think those have to run in the same vein i think you can still be teachable and you can still be confident i like how you address that there yeah um how have you seen uh, maybe that where that goes astray like where where have you seen somebody cross the line and all of a sudden that's not as appealing to me anymore yeah i think when folks are absolute like pretty rigid and absolute absolute in the presentation of their solutions and conclusions that they came up with um yeah i think that that like being hard fast when our industry is like you're you're gonna test something you're gonna a b test you're gonna use your research you're gonna you know put out all of these different use these different means of trying to understand yep. and how something's performing, whether or not it's working and you're going to adjust accordingly. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that uh, some of the things that we look for is, you know, how, like, are you absolute with, with that? 
Um, but more importantly, are you curious? Are you mm-hmm. asking bigger questions sure. that unlock the problem in new ways? Yep. Um, like that's probably more interesting. Let me ask you this. I want you to, uh, I want to challenge one of my own ideas yeah. and get your feedback on it. I'm, I'm often asked, uh, about presentation and in one of these things that I've, I've given advice on is that when a designer is sitting in a room and they're presenting, let's say a portfolio piece or whatever it may be, and they're, they're taking me on the journey. I love it when in that presentation of it, they took me on the path of like, you know, we did these variations and for these reasons, we went down this path hindsight, I think we probably should have gone this route because this one seems like it was probably more scalable. And we ended up running in some issues with this one that, you know, maybe we, we wouldn't have known had we gone down that route, but ultimately it became a roadblock. Like the vulnerability to show in an interview that like we made a mistake. I love that. Would you be okay with that in the interview? That what do you a, think? That is a home run <laughs> to be able to lay out here are all of the choices, the pros and cons of each choice, why we made this specific mm-hmm. choice, what we learned, what were the wins and learnings from that choice. That is a home run. Uh, it's so appealing to me. And I think a lot of times people think like, well, I need to impress you. And I need you to understand that we went through the process and we arrived at the right answer. And that's why you're going to hire me is because at the end of this, I arrive at the right answer. That's my core narrative, you know, but it's like we arrive at the right answer through a series of events and a, a steps down this trail that ultimately wasn't the right trail is okay. That's part of the process. Uh, and so I liked, I like to see a little bit of that, uh, that vulnerability, I guess. It's vulnerability. It's how did you pivot? Like as you were learning new things. So I would ask in that example, okay, now that, you know, you've tried this route and it doesn't, how might you kind of incorporate some of the things that you wanted to do with option C Mm -hmm. instead of B, Mm -hmm. you know, I would on the fly ask about what next steps might you um, how might you figure that out? So let me ask you then this too, because I, in the same conversations that I've had with other designers, uh, I also tell them that I'm all right in the interview. If you tell me you don't know the answer, but don't stop just there. I'm okay. If you say, you know, that's a tough question and there's a lot of variables at play. Here's some of those variables that I think we could identify. And then what I would like to do next is maybe we need to do this research or maybe we need to flush this idea, or maybe I need to do uh, more, I need to understand business more, or maybe I need to do additional interviews in order to come up with a good answer. And the reason I say I'm all right with that, I don't know. And here's what I want to do next is because with those designers who are in that maybe zero to three, four, five years of experience, we're not hiring you to have all the answers. We're hiring you to discover the answers. And when you come up with an answer on the fly that really I know you haven't thought of, I haven't thought of, uh, to what avail is that? It's just an opinion. So if somebody was to come back in the interview with, you know what, Kim, that's a good question. And I don't know the answer to that, but here's what I would like to do next. What would your impression of that response? Yeah, I think that's a, a, a great response. I think more specifically what you suggested around here are the variables at play Mm -hmm. that should be in consideration. You know, prefacing it with, I'd like more time to flesh out like what a solution might be. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm hearing that these are the, I'm thinking that these are the top variables. These are the top considerations. Considering these considerations, I would, you know, have these points of view percolating in my mind, but would need to get, some data to confirm that yeah. and specifically looking at what might a hypothesis be. Mm-hmm. So maybe if you don't have a specific answer, if you can say, here's some hypotheses that I would be interested in testing. Yep. I'd be interested in finding out would users click on this? Would this drive more engagement if this was you know placed here sure. versus here? Sure. I'd be curious if, you know, an improvement in the copy right. would make a significant difference in engagement. So 
put it, being able to quickly come up with the hypothesis that you'd is be a interested in, set, right? in testing right. that m- might get you to the solution. Yeah. No, and I love that. And I like how you talked about addressing the variables and now tying that back to confidence is I see that not having an answer on the fly is not the lack of confidence. You know, you can still be confident and identify some of your unsurety in a solution. Does that ring true? That does ring true. Uh, it's not a lack of confidence. It's 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 appreciating the process. It's it's demonstrating that you know that hey, this is a complex thing, and um, there are, there are many factors at play, and you don't want to be presumptuous. Yeah. But you do want to contribute in the conversation. So yep. I think thinking about um, addressing the variables and just initial what initial questions, again, it kind of goes back to curiosity. Yep. What initial questions might you yes. ask and what initial hypotheses might be triggers for you? Do you think any of what we've discussed right there, do you think that changes as you start to gain more experience? Honestly, I feel like that's a formula that anyone can use at really? any level. Because I, I've had pushback on that idea that somebody says like, no, once you start to gain experience, you should have a better idea of what the answer is. To which I kind of have mixed feelings on. Yes, that's true. It's based on experience. But at the same time, no one problem is the exact same. And there's going to be other variables. So you might have a stronger hypothesis. Yeah. What do you think? I think when you're more senior, you have a stronger hypothesis. You can pull from your wealth of experience to say, Mm -hmm. you know what? You know, 10 years ago when I did this for this company, um, this is how that netted out for me. So we could try something like that in this scenario. So you're able to pull on the past to say, I wonder if this approach would work. Sure. You know, so you, you do have more of that, but the baseline is still the same. Yeah. So maybe this is stuff that anyone can apply then. It's not just necessarily for somebody with entry level experience. I think so. I think being able to think quickly um, and thoughtfully about a problem space um, and on your feet is really important no matter what level you're at. And the difference between whether you're starting out or not, um, you know, as you're further on in in your career, you just have more to pull from. Mm-hmm. So it's just easier. Oh, yeah. It's much easier and you'll have more concrete examples to show. Um, you'll be able to say, you know, a time that this worked for me was sure. X, Y, Z. Yeah, I totally see that. What was the, uh, remind me of that third thing that you you talked about. You talked about core narrative, confidence, and the third one. Presence. Presence. Yeah, presence. There's a really great book and now I'm like blanking on her name. Um, <laughs> it's a really great book. I think Amy Cuddy. Amy Cuddy. I believe that sounds familiar. I What's the book? It's called Presence. It's called Presence. Okay. Um, and I want to say it's Amy Cuddy, and she she does a lot of work in like body language oh. and confidence cool. and a lot in this space. And I think. Presence is an interesting thing. The presence that you have, um, giving yourself time to formulate the answer, not rushing, um, just your posture, um, how engaged are you in the conversation? Tell me some of these tricks. I mean, that's, 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 that's an interesting topic. So tell me some of these tricks. What are those things that you're looking for? What, what types of body language do you read into? And I don't think that anyone's specifically looking for it. That's the thing. Sure. It's just, I guess it's the presence that comes that's across. The thing. Like, yeah. It's, you're more likely to be engaged in a conversation in which someone is speaking from a place of comp, like it's, it's more than confidence. They believe, you know, that mm-hmm. there's, um, they believe they're enthusiastic. They are curious, all of these things that are just make engaging a, a little bit better. And it, has nothing to do with whether you're an introvert or an extrovert or not. These are just like really, really soft skills that I think 
kind of come back to the root of connecting with your passions because when you start with a place of here's what I'm really excited about here's what I'm interested it just comes through yeah there's just like a vibrancy that comes through and I think no one's actively saying you know here's my checklist in this interview and was presence one of them like no um but I think you know I think it it helps to think about communication culture will they be a culture ad you know Mm -hmm. how do they contribute to conversation and and to to the team and how do they think and how um, how expressive they are they with those thoughts yeah that makes sense and that has nothing to do with whether or not again that you're introverted or extroverted right but are you utilizing these tools yeah that makes a lot of sense. What is it, before we wrap, I want to know what other thoughts maybe you've had around this topic or themes that you've, you've seen popped out in your your experience with interviews. Is there anything else that maybe you go, oh, this really helps somebody stand out or this could really hinder you uh, in ways that maybe people aren't thinking about? Yeah. I think the best way to stand out is 100% showing the impact of the work. Impact of the work. Mm-hmm. That's that's the the best way to do that, and um, and I think that that is a delicate dance between knowing what it takes to get the job done and, mm-hmm. and showing your process and how you arrived to the choices that you made, yeah, as well as taking the interviewer on the journey, mm-hmm. you know, for that. So it's you know communicating impact uh pulls on both hard and soft skills yeah i'm always concerned on the podcast that uh the podcast itself almost becomes like an echo chamber right where you know dylan only brings guests on who think the same way he thinks (laughs) um i i i i don't have nearly as much experience as you do and so it's nice to be able to hear you articulate some of those thoughts uh in your experience with interviewing and running teams and managing teams. Um, I'm happy to hear that a lot of these thoughts align with some of these things that I've learned in the process of past interviews. Um, so I think it's really great for those who are listening to, to recognize that hopefully I'm not leading you down any path of answers, but that this is something that, uh, that you've gained for yourself over the years of your interviewing experience. Uh, I think Absolutely. You're not leading me at all. I think that, you know, when we're looking for folks to join a team, it's how will they collaborate? How will they um, connect? How will they communicate their thoughts and ideas and uh, and creatively spar with others? And how do they think? Yeah. So all of those things are interesting uh, that aren't technically on a review yeah and i really like what you said earlier in the podcast about talking about uh, some of the experiences that you've had that helped shaped you to become who you are because i think sometimes people get so narrowed in on just different results and variables that again you lose sight of the fact that you are a unique individual and we're hiring you as a unique individual to become part of our team so be yourself be uniquely you be genuine be authentic because we don't need robotics we don't need the written answer that you've heard in other schools or whatever it may be so be uniquely you it sounds like something that would help others stand apart if they have done if they've identified what their core narrative is they can take people on the journey if they have presence and confidence all while intermixed with being uniquely themselves i think that sounds like a great recipe 100 percent. i will never forget in college my um, professor for drawing class said to me kim no one can make the mark that you make your mark making is unique unto yourself so I love that vantage point of the world. Like no one's going to make the marks yeah. that you're going to make on the pieces of paper that you're going to make them yeah. on. So um, just really embrace that. Yeah. Kim, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. 
Yeah, thanks again for having me. This has been a, a treat. And I do think that for those who have been following along, they've really got actionable insights that they can take to their next interview, regardless of zero years of experience or five or 10 years of experience. This is all very actionable and I appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks so much. Okay, that's a wrap. 